Hello everybody, good morning. Thank you for inviting me here today to talk about stammering and walk over to control my speech. The purpose of this presentation today is to bring some awareness about stammering and perhaps change people's perceptions about the condition. I'm going to question two understandings of stammering. Stammering as a physical disability and stammering as a mental health condition. I've already met one speech therapist this morning, which is fantastic. Can I ask, are there any other speech therapists in the room? Hands in the air? <laughs> what is a stammer? My understanding of what a stammer is, is that it's an emotion-based habit, a punishment-learned habit, where an emotional charge attached to words, sounds, and situation grows over time. Recently I've thought about stammering as an anxiety disorder where certain stresses cause fear and the result is stammering. Whatever the mental processes are behind stammering, the result is a physical one. Freezing of the diaphragm, tension in the book, articulators of mouth and both cords. My first recollections of stammering was when I was aged eight. And I choose my words carefully, my first recollections of stammering. Because I must have been stammering before I realised what I was doing. My first recollections of stammering was when I was being taken out of class to go to NHS for therapy. So the stigma about what I was doing wasn't there for me, it was imposed on me. My parents obviously had an issue. But I was just a child stuttering away. I'd like to define my terms at this point, stuttering, stammering. I view stuttering as an adjective, something we all do, whereas a stammer is a coupling of that physical impediment with a mindset. My speech at school wasn't great, I found school particularly difficult, especially the registers. Oh, the dreaded registers. At my school we did something a bit different, instead of the usual yes Mr. Pass or present, we used to have numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, really quick. And I could have chosen any number of scenarios to share with you today, but I choose this one in particular, and I'd like you to remember that S sound, which I'll be coming back to later on. Gradually through school, my speech deteriorated. Notice that NHS speech therapy didn't work. I think it's a shame the first point of call for parents when they have a child who stammers is to go to NHS speech therapy. My understanding is that any speech therapists don't spend too much time at university and on their courses studying stammering. Speech therapists do a great job of people who are deaf, people who have strokes. But I'm convinced that speech therapy made my stammer worse. I used to go to a speech therapist and spend half an hour reading aloud, stammering for half an hour. Having to do cognitive tests, uh, I think this made the stigma. Age 16, I just joined a wonderful course called the Maguire Program, which is the technique I'm using today. The Maguire technique centres on costal breathing, non avoidance, and sports mentality. It was founded by an American called Dave Maguire. Dave McGuire was a sports psychologist and he was an opera enthusiast. And he coupled his understanding of the mental processes in athletes with a breathing technique that opera sings. I'm now a coach on the course. I have two mentees who I speak to regularly and I monitor their technique and make sure they're in the psychological position where they can apply the McGuire. 
What's beautiful about the Maguire program and what's key to its success is, is that it's a course run for stammerers by stammerers. So that advice given and that guidance is from people who've gone through it and are using that technique every day. So what? So you can speak. Stop talking about it then. Get off and live your life. <laughs> There's no cure to stammering. Six months ago, I was in my car. I had to get there. I pulled into the garage, very busy. There was one pump free. Any guesses which number? Six. Six. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> and this scene really upset me. It was in my car at the petrol station, and this flash of fear, pure, unadulterated fear, just rose through me. Deeply affected me. I almost turned my car around. 16 years old, over 10 years of using this Maguire technique, and this memory remains from school. I studied planning at the University of Sheffield, and I've undertaken two internships at a firm called Subs. <laughs> And I've blocked more times on that SL than I haven't. What's going on then? Why, amongst all these good speaking situations, do I still find myself stammering and in negative situations? And to try and explain what's going on, I would like to talk about approach avoidance complex. So I'm going to introduce Malcolm the Mouse. Malcolm is here, just picture Malcolm in your mind. And here we have some cheese. <coughs> Malcolm is hungry and he wants to get his cheese. At this point, he can just walk across the floor and eat the cheese. No what if we were to put a plastic tube so that Malcolm would have to get through the tube? At this point, probably not very much. He's still happy to do it. He might find it a bit odd, but he's still going to eat the cheese. What happens if you put 10 tubes? Malcolm is starting to get a bit confused. He doesn't know which tube. What's this got to do with stammering? Well, what if in five of those 10 tubes we put electric bolts? Malcolm is not only confused, he's now scared. What happens when we jump? If someone plays loud music or honks their horn, what happens? Our muscles contract. It's the freezing of the diaphragm, tension, vocal force factor. That's the mental process and the physical result of stammering. Fear plus confusion equals panic. After my A levels, I went travelling and I really tried to speak foreign language. I really did. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. There was too many approach avoidance conflicts, those cheats. I had all those usual pressures. Is my technique going to stand up? Is my diaphragm in the right position? <coughs> have I warmed up enough? And then those added ones. Am I saying the right words? Is my accent right? Are they going to laugh? Are they going to ask me to repeat myself? And so on and so forth. Now, I've mentioned electric bolts, which I'm just going to focus on that for a moment. It might be a bit strange for some people. I described stammering before as a punishment learned habit. If one grew up and every time they saw the colour red, they would think so. They would eventually be scared of the colour red. Now the blows that a stammerer gets are emotional blows. Emotional blows that the stammerer largely gives themselves. But when I was in these situations as a boy, the fear I would feel was so vivid that it was traumatic traumatic to a point where these memories have stayed. And the key to the Maguire program, the technique is that it shifts the psychological processes that goes on in the stammerer's mind. An out of control stammerer only plays the draw. If I can get through this situation without stammering, I'll be fine. Whereas on the Maguire program, we don't want to just not stammer. 
we aim for control. We aim, and a byproduct of control is happiness. That goes from a fundamentally negative mindset to an inherently positive. And evidently, one can train themselves to not stammer. So if one can train themselves not to stammer, if they can control that stress, then it can't be a physical disability. But then thinking back to that time at school, when I had trouble saying that S sound, seven. Now I said that I was stuttering before I stammered. The physical process preceded the mental one. So that stigma and that fear wasn't there to begin with. But I still blocked on that S sound. Which makes me think maybe it is a physical The difficulty with stammering is that no one really knows what it is, no one knows what causes it, and that is very few effective treatments. The issue I have with my own speech is that it takes so much emotion, such emotional intensity for me to speak like I am doing now, that I can't keep it up. I don't speak like this. I often speak like this, but not like this. And it's that fluctuation in my speech which means I can't come to terms with it. Sometimes I'm almost a fluent speaker, and other times I'm very difficult. The times where I feel most comfortable speaking is when I admit to myself that perhaps maybe I do have a disability. And that brings me peace and I can let it go. But in that letting it go, I've changed my mental process. In admitting I've got a physical disability, I've shifted my very mental process which is quite cyclical. I hope what I've had to say here today has been interesting. Thank you very much for inviting me. You're all now part of my journey. I'll remember all your faces. Please come and speak to me after and ask me any questions. Thank you.